Hello, good morning. It's Tuesday, it's 9.15. I'm Victoria Derbyshire. Welcome to the programme. This morning, a woman who earns just under £12,000 as a dance teacher talks to a mum of eight who gets around £26,000 in benefits. One says she feels as though she's being punished for working. The other says she doesn't know how she'll feed her eight children when new benefit changes come in. Also, 1,400 children are thought to have been sexually exploited in Rotherham. And now the police force at the centre of the scandal has been told it's still failing to protect vulnerable children. We actually have victims telling us now uh, that they do have trust in South Yorkshire Police, that actually uh, we have really improved uh, from where we were. There's still more to do in relation to that, but I do feel very reassured by that. Well, we'll speak to a victim of the Rotherham abuse scandal before 11. Also, deeply concerning and truly appalling how a group of plastic surgeons is describing a website which encourages men to donate money towards women's boob jobs. There's no pressure at all on the ladies to do erotic photos or anything of that sort. I mean, if you don't like what one of the men's saying, it's up to you. You can just block them and move on to somebody else who's friendlier. There's no pressure whatsoever. We'll talk to the website's founder later. Hello, good morning, welcome to the programme on BBC Two and the BBC News Channel. Uh, thank you to everyone who watched and got in touch and contributed uh, yesterday on our debate on mental health. It was quite something, uh, seeing so many people talk so honestly and courageously about their mental health. If you want to watch back any of the programme, you can find a link to it on our programme page, bbc.co.uk forward slash Victoria. Later on this morning, we'll bring you the latest instalment in journalist Sue Lloyd-Roberts' video diary for this programme. Sue has an aggressive form of leukaemia and is about to have a stem cell transplant. Plant. Plus, we'll talk about the dating site for people who are cheating on their partners, which has been hacked, and those hackers are threatening to release the details of all the users. If you use the site and want to talk to us anonymously, do get in touch. Your contributions to the programme are absolutely key. All the ways to get in touch are right there, and uh, texts will be charged at the standard network rate. First this morning, we're going to talk about the government's planned £12 billion welfare cuts. Late last night, MPs voted in favour of the changes. Labour's temporary leadership team had called on its MPs not to vote against the Conservative government, but 48 of those MPs defied that order. We'll talk about the political fallout from that vote later on in the programme with our political guru, Norman Smith. But first, what are the changes? Well... A limit on the amount a household can claim in total on benefits will fall from £26,000 a year to £20,000 a year and £23,000 in London. Child tax credits will be limited to two children for new claimants. And the amount you can bring in before tax credits start being taken away from you is effectively going to be halved. So at the moment, any household earning up to £6,420 a year gets the full amount of whatever tax credits they're allowed to claim. Under the new rules, the amount you can earn before tax credits get reduced is almost halved to £3,850 a year. And in what critics say is a double whammy, the reduction in tax credits will also go down much more steeply than it does at the moment. So the current taper rate, or amount of credits the government takes away, is 41%. That will rise to 48%. So you'll get a smaller amount of tax credits more quickly as your earnings go up. The Institute of Fiscal Studies, which is an independent research unit, estimates that 3 million families will lose an average of £1,000 a year as a result of these changes. The IFS says this will mostly protect those not in work at the expense of those in work on low wages. Let's bring together three people in very different circumstances. Marie Buckham is in Birmingham. She is 33. She's looking for work. She's a single mum of eight children and received £26,000 in benefits. That will drop to £20,000 a year in benefits as a result of last night's vote in the Commons. Amanda Harnetti is here, a single mum of four. Most of those are grown up now. She works 16 hours a week and receives child tax credits and working tax credits. Her incomings will drop by £750 a year as a result of changes to working tax credits. 
and Claire is with us. Claire has asked us not to use her surname. Claire is self-employed and works full-time in London as a dance teacher, earning just under £12,000 a year. And also, we're going to talk to Labour MP Stephen Kinnock, who supports some of the Conservative government's welfare changes. Welcome, all of you, and thank you very much for talking to us. Um, Marie, let's begin with you. Um, you're, I mean, you could lose £6,000 when the new benefits cap comes in as a reduction, as a result of the reduction from 26 k a year to £20,000 a year. How is that going to affect you and your eight children? It is going to be an impact, obviously, because I'm currently paying for rent at the moment. So where else is obviously my money going to go and how, how is it going to be made up? I'm paying for rent. So in a way, you've got to think I'm going to have to go to work 16 hours, which I have got a job interview today. So I'm aiming for that. So that'll be a good start to come out of the cap. I think that's a better way of life is coming out of the cap completely. Right. So do you think your the kind of motivation for, for, for really going for jobs has been because you knew this benefit cap was likely to come in? Yes, definitely. 100%. I've been looking the past three months now with no, no hope whatsoever. Mm. So hopefully today's the day. Right. So in effect, you're doing what the government wants. You're going yep. out to try and get a job because your benefits are being reduced. Yes. Which a lot of people, I think, will do because you won't be able to survive on the benefit money at right. all. I mean, I'm just looking at your children. The eldest is 13, the youngest is one. Yeah. You've got a three-year-old, a five-year-old, a six-year-old, a nine-year-old, a ten-year-old, an eleven-year-old and the thirteen-year-old. Yeah. I mean, gosh, I don't know how your body's coped for a start. That's a, that's a whole different conversation. It is, it is. That's hard work on its own. But do, did you always want a family as big as that? I did, yes. From the very young age, yeah, Why? I always said seven. I don't know myself. I really don't. I wanted to be surrounded by a lot of little people. <laughs> right. And do you? Th I know you have worked part time in the past. Do you? Yeah. Do you think partly the, the the number of children that you've got is to do with the fact that you have been on benefits for a number of years? I think it's been a big impact because you obviously concentrate and focus on the children first, not really bother looking for work or courses or anything. So, mm. but now is my time to look definitely to get out of the cap. Hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Um, Claire, let me bring you in. In terms of the cap coming down from 26k to 20,000 if you're outside of London, 23 if you're in London, mm -hmm. you work full time. I do. What do you think about people who, who are not working, who will be able to claim benefits of 20,000 or 23,000 pounds a year? The thing is, I, I understand that everybody's situation is different, but myself and most of the people I know do work full time, hard, and don't get paid barely anything and the, the argument for 16 hours of people can only work 16 hours a week because they have to have their benefits unfortunately I do understand that because if the government actually played a decent wage to begin with they wouldn't have to subsidize people by giving them more benefits it's just it's you mean it's if, companies ridiculous... paid more, if companies paid more they wouldn't a proper, need there's, to be... a, there's all this talk about the living wage and everything mm. else there's, you know there's no such that they, they haven't made it as such prices for everything are going up I mean, myself, I'm in a lucky position. I live at home, so I don't have to pay if I, for whatever reason, work has been slower one month. I, my mum is able to reduce my rent, but most people aren't in that position. If you live out of home, if you chose to live out of home while things were better, and then you've, you know, you have to pay your rent. You, don't, you can't just turn around and say one month, oh, I can't pay it. Mm. Um, so people that rely on, like, you know, Marie saying that she, has to she's never looked for a job before now I understand she has to look after her children my goodness I work in the school I've worked there for nine years I know that better than anybody but just live having children and living off benefits I have I, I don't you know not trying to look for work I think that's a bit I just don't agree with that I think you should at least try to mm. for your for yourself as well I mean she's obviously done a wonderful job of looking after her children she's got eight of them that's fantastic and good on you but that's what she wants but well, for people can, like me talk to, I've, got, I've got messages coming in from people watching on my iPad which I've yeah. left over there which I'll just get in a moment Do, go I, on I think it's I think you've clearly done an amazing job raising eight children is extremely difficult you know I work with a classroom full of them that are not mine and my goodness that's tricky but you must get tired but I wonder if you decided just to have children obviously you, something you've always wanted was a big family but do you not also think it's 
you know, if you couldn't afford to have all those children, was that ever something that entered your mind? Because I couldn't, you know, I'd love to have children one day, but it will be purely based on whether I can afford to have my children. I would never have children and live in my parents' place because that's not a burden I wish to bring on them because I don't, it's bad that they had to raise me and my sister, their time of that is done. But do you think that by having eight children, that was, you know, in some ways irresponsible? In a way, definitely, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I'm not, I'm not judging you because no, I don't I know, know your situation yeah. for one second, but, you know, I, I see people that are my age that are getting married, you know, we're 26, 27, going on to that age where things want to be done, but you can barely afford to get out of home, never mind have to look after a child. I mean, the, my friends, uh, you know, a good few of my friends have children and they have find the f same frustrations that you do trying to find work that fits around looking after the children but I don't at the same time I don't think you should be solely ben you know solely dependent on benefits because yeah. it's you yeah. know unfortunately for people like me I'm not entitled well actually but I'm not entitled to things because I don't have a child because I you know I don't have a significant other but that means that I can't do things I can't afford to move out I can't afford to you know splash out on holidays or cars or anything like that and you know I, I find sometimes that really really frustrates me it makes me angry and you know like I say I'm not judging you for one second like clearly you're doing a fantastic job but you can understand the frustration of people yeah. and yeah but I think it's still good on you for that's you. really quite incredible eight children thank you <laughs> Uh, Claire, I think you have considered actually reducing your hours in the past and, yeah. and actually making it up by claiming benefits but decided against it. I just thought that that, I wouldn't, that wouldn't sit well with me. It's not something I would be comfortable with. I, I'm proud of what I do. I love what I do. I love working with the children. You know, that genuinely there's nothing better. But, yeah, sometimes it's frustrating because I think, well, why can't I mm. do that? Yet again, you know, my... my Dad and my sister work in, have worked in city, work in the city, and they earn more, but then they get taxed more. So it's just a vicious circle. It's sort let, of, me, let me bring in know. Amanda. Um, you could lose around seven hundred and fifty pounds a year as a result of the changes to to working tax credits. You yeah. work sixteen <clears throat> hours at the moment. Yeah. What in, most of your children are growing up. You've got a fifteen-year-old at home. What yeah. impact is that going to have on you and him? Well, I think it'll have a huge impact because at the moment we're only just keeping our heads above water. Um, I um, am extremely lucky to have uh, the job that I'm doing. Um, I don't know if it would be ever possible to do more hours. Um, and so I don't know how I'm going to make up the shortfall. I'm really grateful that there is a safety net uh, for, for people like me on benefits. Um, but it seems that... The, that these days it's everybody on benefits is a bad person. Um, the welfare state was set up to help people um, who are in need. Um, I'm in need. I'm not a bad person. I have tried extremely hard uh, to, to get work, uh, to, to maintain working, and every time I reach the criteria um, that, that, is, that, I, that is sort of needed to go forward and be able to claim benefits and, and buy food, the goalposts change. Let me bring in uh, Labour MP Stephen Kinnock, who voted for some of the changes last night. And Mr Kinnock, what would you say to Amanda, who works, who works 16 hours a week, but is going to see her incomings drop by £750 because of the cuts, the changes to working tax credits? Well, uh, good morning, Victoria, and thanks. Just to correct one point there, what I actually did yesterday was vote in favour of our amendment which raised our serious concerns with some aspects of this welfare bill and then abstained on the bill overall because there were some aspects of it that we uh, are perfectly happy with, for example, raising the minimum wage. Can the, you tell us, just to be, let's be yeah. clear then, exactly what you support that the government is suggesting and what you don't? Yeah, so I support the increase in the minimum wage. Uh, that's great. I support the levy on um, uh, a, a large companies to fund apprenticeships and I think that the idea of a welfare cap is supportable as long as it's done in a, I think it's done in, in the way the government's doing it, it's too much of a one-size-fits-all solution. I think that the Social Security Commission should be brought in to take a more nuanced approach. So, the, but three so, fairly so, so, large... So, hang on. So, so you support the, the bringing of the, the total cap down to 23k in London and 20 the rest of the country? 
Yeah, I think that that, okay. I, I think and, with, and with some nuances on that. And but, yeah. yeah, and in terms of the working tax credit changes, no. broadly? No, uh, I don't. I think what we've got here is a Chancellor who's robbing Peter to pay Paul, as Amanda has just so eloquently set out. Mm. Uh, it's fine to have an increase in the minimum wage, but if at the same time you're taking away people's uh, working tax credits, you're not leaving them any better off at all. And indeed, you're not actually making work pay, which is what I thought this Chancellor was all about. So, I mean, I, I absolutely hear uh, the case that uh, Amanda makes. What we've done is... We, we've got a Chancellor who's very tactical and we've had to box clever. We've said, look, some of the aspects of this we support, some we don't. When it gets to the committee stage, we will be taking this very uh, seriously, looking forensically at each clause and, and going through and, and opposing uh, the, the areas where we see that the Chancellor is going on the wrong track. And just to explain to our audience why, broadly speaking, you support the reduction in the benefit cap, the amount of uh, benefits you can claim in total per year. I think that there are um, a lot of people in this country who are, don't, don't, don't understand why uh, there are cases where you can end up with people making uh, very large, you know, receiving very large benefits over the course of a year. And I think that, that somehow there needs to be some trust in the system so that you know that there is a cap. The, the exact amount of that cap, I think, is something that we've got to look at in the uh, next phase of the reading of this bill. But I think that we've, we have got to a stage where this, there's a lot of division in society, as your um, participants in your show were just saying, where there seems to be people just being branded as, as, as playing the system. I don't think that that happens uh, in the vast majority of cases, but I think we've got to recognise that that lack of trust exists. And I think a good way of dealing with that is to say, OK, well, we do, we cap it. We understand that there are limits on this. Let's put that limit in. Let's put some trust back in the system. And then we can have a much more grown-up debate about the future of our social security system. What do you think would be the right cap? Are you saying that 20,000 20, is too low? 23 in London is too low, too high? What? Yeah, but both of those caps feel too low to me. Uh, but I th what I think the government should be doing is, is getting the Social Security Commission experts much cleverer than I am at looking right into the detail of how uh, cost of living varies from one part of the country to the other. What is the real cost of living? What does it take for a family of, you know, with, say, two children to be uh, in, in a, a place where they're not living in poverty? Let's but set the cap in a, in a far more... Let's take a scientific approach to this rather than just playing politics with it, which is, I'm afraid, what this Chancellor seems to have done with this budget. But then it is having the desired effect. If we hear Marie Buchan's case, which is you know, presumably what you want. It has prompted her to go out and search really hard for a job. She has a job interview today. Yeah, I, I, I um, think that that's right. I mean, I think the vast majority of people want to work. They want to have the self-esteem and the self-respect that comes with work. And I think that should be our starting point. We have got to a place where I, I think, you know, I, in this election campaign, I knocked on thousands of doors. I spoke to thousands of people. I was struck by the number of people that said, there's too many people out there playing the system. I'm afraid that's a kind of Daily Mail narrative uh, that has cut through, and we've got to try and get some trust back into the system. If we can make sure that we're saying, look, here is the limit, but we also understand that people generally do want to go out to work. They want to make an active contribution to society. That's where we need to get back to. Then we can also have a, a discussion about what, what the right minimum wage looks like. And, and you know, that actually comes back to a, another discussion about what sort of jobs are we creating in this country. You know, in the 1970s, 30% of this economy, of our economy, was based on manufacturing. That's now gone down to 10%. We have too many low-wage, low wage, low uh, quality, if you like, jobs out there. We need to okay. get up the value chain and get people back into work in a way which is actually taking them out of working tax credits because they're getting the kind of wages that mean they don't need those tax credits. One final thought from you, Stephen Kinnett. What about the split in your own party now over this issue? Well, you know, uh, we are a, a party that's always had an active de a debate about important policy issues. I think if you ask the Conservatives in Parliament uh, tomorrow, you know, do you think you should be in or outside the European Union, you would have some pretty uh, clear divisions in that, 
uh, party as well. Parties come, they disagree, they, they come to a consensus and they move forward. And I, I think that people respect the fact that politicians stand up for what they believe in. Let's have that debate. I think it's a, a new kind of politics where we should be able to come forward with different views and not always be seen to be some kind of, uh, you know, uh, marching in step with the party machine. Mm. I don't know if it's that new. <laughs> I, I, suspect, I suspect your father would suggest it's not that new, but thank you very much for talking to us, thank you. Uh, Stephen Kinnock and uh, Marie Buchan. Good luck with your job interview today. What's thank it for? What's the interview for? Home help. Help okay. the elderly, yes. Good luck. Thank um, you. Claire, thank you very much for coming on the programme. Amanda, thank you very thank much you. Thank for you. coming on the programme. Still to come today, as computer hackers steal personal data from an adultery 